It seems like every champion is trying to be a double champ. And this might be a problem. The double champ situation is starting to get out of hand and this Reddit post has made the rounds and it seems like everyone is starting to agree. Recently, we saw Alex Pereira become double champ, not simultaneous, but in the wake of that event, Jamal Hill out of nowhere calls out Tom Aspinall who won the interim belt in that same event. But what makes this call out so absurd and unprovoked is that Jamal Hill doesn't even have the belt at 205, still needs to take care of business with Alex Pereira before he can even get a shot at a guy like Tom Aspinall. And these ridiculous callouts seem to be taking place amongst all other champions in each division. Islam Makachev, despite only defending his belt twice, both times against a 145er, has already been calling out Leon Edwards at 170. Like I understand Islam looks pretty dominant at 155, being on a 13 win streak, not having lost since 2015, and having defeated Charles Oliveira to get the belt, and then bulk twice to defend. But still, calling out Leon Edwards and potential double champ status is absurd considering he he hasn't even fought longtime contenders like Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier. And sure, Islam would probably win over those guys, but no matter how theoretically favored Islam is against those guys, he still hasn't fought them and still wants to fight Leon. And speaking of Leon Edwards, despite still only defending his belt once and still needing to take care of Colby in December, He's already calling out the winner of Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis in January and is also claiming that there are no exciting fights at welterweight. No exciting fights? Last time that I checked, Shavkat has been a wrecking ball in the division and is still undefeated. And I know you want exciting, but I still think with the eye poke fiasco, there's still unsettled business with Bilal that he should take care of before he looks at the winner of Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis at 185. And speaking of the winner of the upcoming 185 title fight in January, Drakus Duplessis is already saying that he wants to become double champ after his hopefully successful bid for the belt when he fights Sean Strickland, which brings us back to 205. Fighters always make these annoying callouts that no one really called for, and that's just a part of the sport, but for some reason, this particular type of callout is annoying fans the most currently. So our first question is, how did we get here? Before this, the culture of simultaneous double champions was much more different than it is now. From 2016 to 2019, when these four became simultaneous double champions, I feel like there wasn't that much ridiculous different weight callouts like we are seeing today, despite getting a new simultaneous double champ almost every single year. And I think the culture of champ champ was basically agreed upon everybody that you had to have dominated your division to the point of no competition before you had the right to move up. And after Henry Cejudo became the last simultaneous double champ in June of 2019, we didn't see much attempts from champions to become champ champ or any call outs for that matter. The next attempt would be Israel Adesanya in 2021 when he went for the light heavyweight strap but was outmanned by Jan Blachowicz. And then we wouldn't see an attempt at champ champ until two years later in 2023 when Volk essentially cleared out 145 and made his attempt against newly crowned 155 champion Islam Makachev. And after Volk's bid for double champ at 155, this is where everything changed. Despite Volk losing this fight, this fight showed everyone one important thing. There really is no risk when moving to a new division and no stakes for the champ that's attempting double champ status. Volk was still held in high regard in this close fight with Islam Makachev and still officially held the pound for pound crown even after the loss. And this is what everyone realized. Even if the champ moving up loses, they're still the champ in their own weight class. They have a belt to come back to, making the risk very low but making the reward extremely high. And the loss really has little to no effect on their legacy. I don't know why champs didn't realize this with Izzy's attempt at double champ two years prior, but I would say most people don't hold Izzy to his loss against Jan Bohovic and even says that it was a side quest. So with Volk's attempt early this year in 2023 and the realization of low risk and high reward, the floodgates of outlandish double champ callouts were opened. After Leon's first successful title defense against Kamaru Usman just one month after Islam edged out Volk in their first fight for his first title defense, Islam was quick to call out Leon for champ champ status. Then Leon a couple months later calls out the winner of Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis before his bout with Colby Covington. Then Jamal Hill a day after Leon makes that call out calls for his double champ bid without having a belt in either heavyweight or light heavyweight for that matter. 
and somewhere in between Drakus Duplessis is already gunning for 205 ahead of his fight against Sean Strickland. Sure, these callouts are annoying, but there's a real problem to champions constantly calling out others in different divisions. One problem, or the immediate problem that everyone alludes to when talking about simultaneous double champs is the problem of holding up divisions. On paper, when a champion moves up to a new division, there's no longer a champ at the division they're moving from. So usually interim champs have to be created or contenders just have to fight amongst themselves and wait for the champion to come back down. And potentially the division that they're going into may be held up because there might be a weird waiting period in which we don't know if the champion is going to stay in that division or move back down. For two years from 2016 to 2018, the quote unquote champ of 155 didn't even have a fight in the UFC and Habib had to fight Al Iaquinta for the interim belt, which really meant nothing to the division other than Habib was next for Connor whenever he came back. Holding up the division was also my knee-jerk reaction, but the more I think about it, the more I realize it's not as big of a problem as it's made out to be. Everyone points to Connor for starting the double champ frenzy and holding up the lightweight division, but he really didn't hold up the division because he became champ champ, he really held it up because he went on to fight Floyd. When most champs become double champs, they vacate the title from the division they're coming from and simply become the champ at the new weight class, and it's usually smooth sailing from there in both divisions. When Daniel Cormier became double champ at heavyweight after his KO over Stipe Miocic, he vacated his light heavyweight title five months after, allowing John Jones to rematch Alexander Gustafsson and win the 205 gold again. And most recently, when Alexander Volkanovsky first tried double champ status, Yair and Josh Emmett fought for the interim belt on the same card and set up Yair versus Volk for Volk's next title defense at 145, so the featherweight division was far from being held up while Alex pursued double champ. I think the real problem doesn't lie with the champions, but it lies with the contenders. For the division the champ is departing from, the contenders don't have a chance at defeating the champ. Most would agree that the true champ would be the guy that beat the guy. A fight between the top contenders for the vacant belt is acceptable, but what we really want to see is true title lineage and the champ to be the guy that beat the previous champ. For the division that the champ is arriving in, it's usually unfair to the contenders at that division for some guy getting the title shot simply because of their champ status in a completely different weight class. Like imagine if Islam somehow leapfrogs over Shavkat or Bilal to fight Leon. That would be very unfair for those contenders. Additionally, the best fights have true stakes on the line and that's usually a belt. Champions moving up risk nothing while champs defending have everything to lose. And this goes back to being unfair to contenders. The typical contender who fights for the belt risks not having a title title shot for a very long time or never having a title shot again. Meanwhile, the champion moving up is the champion. Like mentioned before, whatever happens, they still have a belt to come back to and thus little to no risk in comparison to the typical contender. And in general, quick double champ achievements lower the significance of the double champ status overall. Before, the culture of double champ meant that that champion had basically cleared out their division and was seeking more greatness by moving up to another weight class. And I know a lot of people criticize Connor's double champ status, but he's in a very unique case in that even though he didn't defend his featherweight title, he essentially up until that point had cleared out every single contender getting up to Jose Aldo. Now with these quick callouts and potentially quick double champ achievements, we have to question whether or not that champion was truly dominant in their weight class or they had some type of opportunity to move up very quickly and had a stylistic advantage with the guy in the above weight class and just got double champ status like that. But despite this slew of problems that come with the double champ situation, I do think the solution is relatively simple. And like many people suggested, I think that the champion moving up should have at least three title defenses. This is the most fair to the contenders in that champ's weight class, as for the most part, they have the chance to beat the guy to be the champ. And I was on the fence with this additional solution, but I thought about the champ moving up should have to fight the number one contender at that division before getting the actual champ. This would be fair to the contender at that division and makes the guy moving up earn the title shot. But the problem with this approach is that this might actually hold up the champ's original division as now as a contender in that division, you're waiting for the champ to fight not just once, but now two times before you get the shot at the true champ. So maybe we don't go with this. Anyways, I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on the double champ problem as it continues to grow. And I wanna hear your guys' solutions to the problem. Again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week. Peace.